Hello and welcome to another CloudWords video. Today we are revisiting our Dropbox review. Wait, how long was this ago? Let me ask Vicky, the video editor. Vicky, when did we last publish the video? Hey Mauricio, it was August 2022. Wow, <laughs> time flies. Anyway, <laughs> if you are watching this video, chances are you're wondering whether you need to get Dropbox to store your files. The good news is that my team of cloud storage experts and I have dedicated several years to using Dropbox. And we know all there is to know about the platform and I'd love to share those insights with you today. I'll be going over the insights gathered. Along the way, we'll explore features, security, privacy, speed, and of course, pricing. Stick around until the end so you know where the Dropbox earns its place as our go-to cloud storage solution. Before we get going, make sure to smash that like button and hit subscribe below to get updated on whenever we post new videos. I'm honestly a little bit sad because the majority of you guys who watch this channel and who watch the videos do not subscribe. So we want to get the subscriber ratio up a little bit. So do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and never miss the next video. Now, Dropbox offers many features. There are the traditional cloud storage tools and also tools to enhance your workflow because cloud storage services these days never just want to be just cloud storage. And on top of storing and managing and sharing your files, you can also create and manage work through the integrations available that we're going to talk about now. I'm going to start by looking at the integrations available because it's an indust interesting industry landscape that's opening up here for us. As someone who creates a lot of written content, I especially like that Dropbox integrates with Google Workspace, for example. You can create, organize and share Google Docs, Sheets and Slides right within Dropbox. They'll automatically save to the cloud as well, so you don't need to worry about backing them up manually. If you're not a fan of Google's productivity apps, there is an alternative. Dropbox also has its very own document creator called Dropbox Paper. You can add headings, images, tables, and insert videos too. You and your team can view and edit files in real time, making collaboration super easy and keeping everyone on the same page. Uploading files and sharing them follows the standard, I would call it cloud storage practice. There are some limitations on the size of files you can upload and I will cover them shortly, but for the most part, everything works as you would expect. You upload your files either with a web browser, desktop app or mobile app. And once they are uploaded, you can access them on different devices. Sharing files is pretty easy and depending on your plan, you can control what type of access the person you're sharing files with can have. You can stay in control of your shared contents thanks to trackable links that show when someone has access to a shared file and for how long. Plus, you can revoke access for any individual at any time without affecting others' permissions. This is a very handy feature if you have a larger team or work with external collaborators. If you're wondering what the sharing limits are, here is what you need to know. You can share files through email invitations or shareable links with both registered and non-registered members. But like I said, the file size limits and control over shared files vary depending on your plan. The free plan allows up to 100 megabytes while the plus family and standard plan offer two gigabytes. Paid members also enjoy more control over shared files. This includes setting link expiry dates, adding password protection, and also disabling downloads. Now let's talk about Dropbox Transfer. This feature lets you send files and folders that you don't need to col collaborate on. Recipients get a shareable link for direct downloads, no logins required. The transfer expires in seven days for basic plans and 30 days for advanced plans. Business plans offer the largest transfer file size limit up to 100 gigabytes, and even free users aren't left out. They can transfer files up to 100 megabytes. 
On to accessibility. You can access Dropbox on your computer, be it a Mac, Windows, or Linux. There are also mobile apps for Android and iOS. Dropbox allows synchronization across three devices, which is not bad at all, but you can find cloud storage services that offer even more flexibility, like Sync.com, for example, where you can connect up to five computers or phones to one single account. Moving on to the user interface, Dropbox offers a very clean UI and intuitive design that prioritizes functionality over flashy aesthetics. It's really a breeze for users of all levels. You can easily upload files on the web interface via the upload button or by dragging and dropping them into the Dropbox folder. We didn't find the web app to be lagging in any way and offered all round smooth performance. Our findings showed that the web app performs best when using a modern web browser like Chrome, Firefox, or Safari. So for the smoothest experience possible, make sure you're using one of these and keep it up to date. During our testing process, we tested the Dropbox desktop app on both Windows and Mac OS. The desktop app creates a obviously a sync folder on your laptop or on your computer. A super handy feature that I like is called Smart Sync. It allows you to access all your Dropbox files from your desktop, but without needing to store them locally, freeing up space on your hard drive. If you do want to store a file or a folder locally, all you need to do is download. If you'd like to know how to make the most out of Dropbox Smart Sync, check out our guide linked in the description box below. Dropbox Desktop comes with a preference menu for customization, which you can access from the system tray. You can adjust sync notifications, select folders to sync, and configure upload and download speeds. Plus, you can choose whether Dropbox starts automatically when you turn your computer on or allow it to run in the background. Dropbox lets you call the shots, essentially, and that's what I like customization. There are some limitations on the desktop version when compared to the web version. When using Dropbox via your web browser, you can send out signature requests for digital contracts and edit files like PDFs and images. The desktop variant doesn't currently support such functions. One key advantage of using the desktop app is that you can access your files without an internet connection. Any edits or changes you make are automatically synced up once you're back online. Perfect for when you're on the go without Wi-Fi or data. The web app allows you to upload and download your files easily and tweak account settings all from your browser. It's great for when you're hopping between devices, but not so much for offline work. It requires an internet connection to access and sync your files. And finally, let's talk about the mobile app. We tried both the Android and iOS versions. Just like the web app, sign in using your Google account or email, you're good to go. You can upload and access files from your phone. And of course, all your shared folders and files sync automatically across your devices. You can also create and share new files and scan documents from the mobile app. If you're Purely looking at speed, Dropbox is definitely worth checking out. In our recent comparison of 17 services, Dropbox landed an impressive fourth place. However, there are faster options out there, those being pCloud, Google Drive, and iStrive. So you've got choices, you just gotta make your priorities. To test how Dropbox fares in the speed department, we uploaded and downloaded a five gigabyte folder with a one gigabit per second internet connection, throttled to 100 megabits for stability. The process took us an average of eight minutes to upload a five gigabyte folder to Dropbox. And when it came to downloading, it took us seven minutes and 42 seconds on average. The folder had assorted file types such as audio, 4K video, images, documents, and raw text files. The next criteria I know is important to many of you, and that's security and privacy, areas we take very seriously here at CloudWords. And I'm afraid to say Dropbox won't be winning any awards in the privacy department, I'm afraid. It doesn't offer zero knowledge encryption. This is a fancy way of saying that even the cloud storage provider can't access your files as the user has full control and sole access to the encryption keys. Other cloud storage services like Sync.com and pCloud offer this feature, which adds an extra layer of protection to your files. It's why they're two of the best cloud storage services around. And on that note, 
If you're curious about my favorite providers, check out the video above where I share all my favorite cloud storage services. So give that video a look. Dropbox is pretty upfront about sharing data with third parties. According to their website, the information they collect may include the links of websites you've visited, along with the contents of those websites, such as titles, images, and page content. They explicitly state that this data may be shared with what they term as trusted third parties, as well as other Dropbox companies. Well, personally, this is a big no-no for me, and one of the reasons Dropbox won't be one of my daily drivers when it comes to backing up my files. It's a shame because I do think Dropbox really has a lot to offer, but its level of snooping is really such a big turnoff, and I know that's true for many of you that watch this channel as well. I will say, from a security perspective, Dropbox does all the right things and follows what the industry would deem as best practices. The company uses Transport Layer Security, or TLS, to protect your files while you upload them. Once they arrive in the cloud, they're protected by 256-bit AES encryption, which is pretty indestructible, at least as of 2024. Users can also add two-factor authentication to their accounts. This means you'll need to add a code after putting in your standard login credentials. This is very useful, but ensure you can always access your authenticator when you log in or keep your backup codes handy. All right, let's talk about the pricing options. They've got plans for personal use, and for professionals. Let's start with the Plus plan. This is the most affordable option and works out at $9 per month on the annual billing. And with this plan, a single user gets an upload limit of two gigabyte per file and two terabytes of storage with 30 days to restore deleted files. Now, for professionals, there's the Essentials plan. It costs around $200 annually or $20 if you pay month to month and that works out to two free months if you go for the annual plan. As for storage space, it offers three terabytes of storage and allows file transfers up to 100 gigabytes. It includes unlimited signature requests and 180 days to restore deleted files. There are also features like Mm, file engagement metrics tracking and video recording and PDF editing, so you really have to do an inventory of what's important to you. Next up, we have the business plan for Teams. It costs $16 per user per month for three users, and this plan starts with nine terabytes of storage for the team and supports file transfers up to 100 gigabytes. It includes unlimited signature requests, file engagement tracking, PDF editing, video recording and editing. It offers admin setup and content sharing insights along with 180 days to restore deleted files. For companies, Dropbox offers the Business Plus plan. It starts at 15 terabytes of storage for the team and supports file transfers up to 250 gigabytes. You can get a year to restore deleted files, unlimited signature requests, PDF editing, video recording and editing, suspicious activity alerts, and much more. Well, I'll say Dropbox isn't the cheapest option out there. So, if you are on a tight budget, it's worth checking out really cheaper alternatives. What's my personal verdict on Dropbox? Well, as you've heard in this review, it's a little bit of a mixed bag. On one hand, it's great for third-party integrations and it's super duper mega user-friendly, but it's not exactly the best when it comes to privacy and pricing. If these are top priorities for you, you might want to check out other alternative options. And obviously here on the channel, we have a lot of alternatives that you can look at. Just browse the link in the description or watch some of our other videos here on the channel. And I hope you really enjoyed this review. I've heard, I hope you learned something and it cleared up a little bit of, of your decision fatigue when it comes to choosing the best cloud storage for you. And if you found this video helpful, please give the video a like to help us and obviously the YouTube algorithms to incentivize uh, to push a bit more of the videos to you. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more insightful content like this. And would love to hear your thoughts on Dropbox in the comments below and what you like about it, what you dislike about it, 
how do you think Dropbox could improve to make it a no-brainer for you. And remember, you can find full reviews of services mentioned in this video on our website. Links are in the description below. See ya.